Uh, greetings, dear viewers. This is George from Ireland, and I'm continuing my series about German history 1918 to 1945 for A-level. So looking at the early history of the Nazi party. Now, uh, let me say from the outset that uh, Nazism has gone down in history as a byword for evil. And there's no question that the Nazi regime committed uh, atrocities on an absolutely gargantuan scale. Um, so I'm trying to uh, teach this um, topic in history objectively, and that doesn't mean I have no opinion on it, uh, because if, if I talk about uh, Nazism and the Third Reich, people might get the impression that I'm somehow sympathetic to this uh, particularly vile form of racism, and in fact nothing could be further from, the, further from the truth. Anyway, so I talked about how the Nazi party had been founded in 1919, but it was the German Workers' Party, didn't acquire the words National Socialist on the front till a couple of years later. So the Nazis subscribed to crackpot racist theories that there were Aryans, which included um, most whites, not Slavs, as though Western Europeans and Eastern Europeans are not ethnically related. That's preposterous, of course they're related. Um, and that the British and the Germans are amongst the Aryans and that they're somehow better, physically better, cleverer, more moral or something, and that other humans are not quite human. Um, so they were viciously anti-Semitic, the Nazis, everybody knows about that. They railed against the boss class, they disliked big business, they wanted to help small family and businesses. They um, uh, demonised high finance and said that it was Jewish controlled. Um, some of these uh, anti-Semitic uh, nostra were widespread amongst uh, mainstream right-wingers. For example, General Kröner, the first head of the army and under the Weimar Republic, he said that Jews are the wire pullers of international revolution, as though they were behind the curtain pulling the strings to control the puppets who were um, communists. Uh, let me see. So, um, uh, hurry up to other things. Um, let me see. see. The Nazis, they were a militaristic organization. Because the war just ended, the world was awash in military uniforms and guns and so forth. And some people couldn't readjust to uh, civvy streets, some soldiers. The Nazis had their own uh, thug wing, the SA, Sturmabteilung, that storm detachment. There'd been stormtroopers in the German army the last uh, year of the war or so. Um, as in, they'd been an elite unit and their job would be to go forward, to storm enemy, enemy trenches and to go as far into enemy territory as possible, breaking up communications. Um, so they, they suffered very high casualties. So um, the uh, stormtroopers were the most valiant, but the Nazi stormtroopers had not all been in the army and almost none of them had actually been stormtroopers in the army. So they were um, giving themselves plaudits they didn't deserve, and they mostly were there about beating up defenseless people. It was a time of high political violence and other uh, political parties had their own uh, strong arm units as well. Um, it was only much later, 1929, that the SS was formed, Schutzstaffel, as in protection squad, Hitler's personal bodyguard, a few hundred men to begin with. Over the Nazi era, it was expanded and expanded to about 900,000 by the end of the Second World War, and they uh, had to be fine physical specimens to get in. The Reichsführer SS was Heinrich Himmler, who was a crank who believed that a completely blonde race could be bred with about 100 years. This former chicken farmer had an unhealthy obsession with genetics. And he personally examined the applicants uh, to be in the SS with a magnifying glass to, to, to see that they didn't have any facial features which indicated they had some non-Aryan ancestry. Anyway, the whole thing was dribbled, but it was fervently believed by lots of Nazis. And racist theories were, were more widespread than, than we'd like to remember at the time. Um, white supremacism was actually quite common amongst people who were considered to have middle-of-the-road political views in other European countries. Um, let me see. Uh, people who joined the SS at the period they had no Jewish ancestry back to the uh, to the 17th century. It was part of this um, bizarre fixation with the Jewish community and hatred for this ethno-religious group. So the Nazis were chauvinistic in every sense. They also had a disdainful attitude towards women. Feminism was quite a new thing. Germany granted women the right to vote in 1919. And it was part of a wave of countries uh, granting legal equality to women. Universities had recently opened to women and some of the professions. So this was all, these were all very recent innovations, and therefore there were some people who were deeply uncomfortable with these changes, who'd rather turn the clock back, which was not an unrealistic ambition, 
given how um, mm, vulnerable women were to, to these changes being reversed. Uh, their situation was precarious. So there were aghast that said there were some women in, in the Reichstag. They were horrified that women were participating in politics. The Communist Party and the Socialist Party were particularly welcoming to women who wanted to be politically active. And uh, the Nazis said though, that feminism was a Jewish conspiracy to destroy the German family. And they, the Nazis thought that women ought to get married as young as possible and have plenty of children. The Nazis uh, detested over-cultured intellectuals. Well, they couldn't be accused of either of those things. So uh, they exemplified saloon bar prejudices. They detested pacifism, Marxism, democracy, modern art, um, jazz music. That was a, a new thing, the tango. They said these things were Negroid because they were viciously anti-black as well. Um, they didn't want women to wear high heels or makeup. They disliked nightclubs. Music and dancing was allowed, but it had to be German folk music, folk dancing. So they were very uh, xenophobic. Um, they sought to curry favour with the churches, Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church, and indeed people who were religious were often anti-feminist as well. So they, their, their attitudes resonated with a wide segment of the German community. Uh, however, the Nazis disliked Christianity in some ways, especially when it preached uh, turning the other cheek, and there was this uncomfortable realisation that uh, Christianity largely copies Judaism. Um, they uh, were worried that Christianity might lead to racial equality. Um, like in, when, when the German army occupied Poland, German civil authorities were not allowed to go to church with Polish people, because otherwise German Catholics and Polish Catholics hearing Mass at the same time would have a certain commonality. Think, Should we, shouldn't we really be brothers? And They can't be that different, they can't be the enemy, they can't be inferior if we're worshipping in the same church at the same time. Um, so there was a, a real risk people might um, uh, be friends with those of another nationality and the Nazis couldn't possibly tolerate that. Um, so the Nazis claimed that racism was modern and scientific, that it was Darwin. Uh, and they believed that the world was engaged in an eternal mortal struggle. It was the law of the jungle, Hitler said, he who would li live must fight. Uh, eternal struggle is the law of life, as the end of the quotation. So they had um, a uh, brutal view of human nature and they detested uh, compassion and generosity. Uh, and so they drew their support mainly from the lower middle class and from a considerable section of the working class. They were stronger in rural areas, stronger in northern Protestant German areas. That's because there was an extra political party in the Catholic majority areas, the Centre Party, which had a wide, wide appeal across the different social classes. So as we know this, there was the Bill Hall Putsch in 1923. I'll talk about that in more depth later on. Then um, Hitler was in prison briefly, fortress confinement, strictly speaking, at Landsberg am Lech Castle. So he simply had to be there, didn't wear prison uniform, observe prison timetable, do any prison work, had one cell for his bedroom, another one for his drawing room, was allowed to bring his own furniture in, could have as many visitors as he wanted for hours at a time, just had to be there and released after only nine months. But when they came out, they were banned from wearing uniforms for a while and became the Bavarian Flora and Fauna Appreciation Society. Pretty soon the band was lifted and the SA were allowed to go around to wearing their brown shirts, banging their drum and um, uh, goose-stepping around town. But they didn't manage to drum up much support. The mid to late 1920s was a period of tranquility and relative prosperity for Germany. Uh, it's only when the Wall Street crash struck in um, October 1929 that the uh, Nazis were uh, high on the hog again. They'd been in the doldrums for about five years. So Hitler had been a Jeremiah for several years, saying we are prostituting ourselves, selling out to Jewish high finance, and suddenly that struck a chord with many people. And uh, the recovery was not just around the corner, it seemed to only get worse and worse, up to about 25% unemployment in 1933. So they made an electoral breakthrough after 1929, and in July 1932 they peaked, scoring 37% of the vote. There was also a presidential election in that year, in which um, uh, Hitler ran the incumbent, President von Hindenburg, a fairly close second. November, uh, so Hitler was offered to be the vice chancellor in July 1932, but he turned it down. Josef Goebbels, his propaganda chief, wrote in his diary, better to go on struggling for years than accept this. Some Nazis felt that Hitler had made the wrong call, because opportunity knocks, they might never be so popular again. Um, and Germany might recover from the Great Depression, but anyway, in November 1932, there was another election because of the parliamentary arithmetic. 
no one party could command uh, the control of the Reichstag and there were these feeble um, coalitions which were highly unstable. So the Nazis went down to 33% of the vote. Even then there was a bit of cheating because they used to intimidate people, beat people up and quite a few people were killed in 1932. Around 100 people were killed in political violence. Not all the Nazis were killed, not all were victims of the Nazis, but yeah, the Nazis were the most violent party. They seemed to think that was an act of virtue. So uh, November 1932, they scored 33% of the vote and it came down to the government only being viable if it had the support of either the Nazis or the Communist Party. So which one was the conservative elite going to choose?